Hey, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Nomadic Geek. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use an AZ Envy module to send different air quality data, temperature, and humidity to a receiving address on the network using WebSockets. This data will be displayed on a Node.js web server in the web browser for anyone interested in seeing it. The problem we want to solve is the need for different sensors in a van to increase safety. Smoke detectors, CO alarms, and video surveillance are all important for monitoring the air quality and making sure everything is in order. With the help of a microcontroller and web sockets, we can send the data collected by these sensors to a central server that makes decisions based on this data. Using machine learning, the server can analyze the video stream from the cameras and determine what's in the view. This way, it can report any potential problems and help keep the van safe. In this tutorial, we'll show you step-by-step -step how to set up the AZ Envy module and connect it to the Node.js server. We'll also show you how to display the sensor data in the web browser. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you know when I post more content. Stay tuned and let's get started. AZ Deliveries AZ Envy Development Board is an ESP8266 12F based board designed for easy introduction to the world of IoT. The board offers a range of potential uses for makers, hobbyists, and engineers, such as use as a weather station with data transfer to Google Optimize, gas meters, mold protection, and garden house monitoring. The AZ Envy development board can be powered from 3 to 11 volt viaduct micro USB. It has Wi-Fi capabilities, a power saving 32-bit CPU, and a clock frequency of up to 160 megahertz. The board also includes a built-in high precision 10-bit ADC and is programmable via the FT232RL interface. The MQ2 sensor on the AZ Envy allows for increased conductivity with increased gas concentration, making it ideal for use as a domestic gas leak detector, portable gas detector, or for measuring flammable gases. The SHT30 temperature and moisture sensor offers plus or minus 2% relative humidity accuracy, plus or minus 0.2 degrees Celsius temperature accuracy, and a 14-bit measuring resolution. It is connected to the board via an I2C interface on the SDA and SCL pins. Programming the microcontroller chip requires a separately available USB to serial adapter such as the FT232RL module, also provided by AZ Delivery. First, we are going to download Arduino IDE 1.8 to be able to program the AZ Envy, or rather the ESP8266 microcontroller on the module. An IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, is a type of software that provides a developer with a range of tools to write, test, and debug code in a single place. An IDE typically includes a code editor, a compiler or interpreter, and a debugger. When the download is done, begin the installation process for Arduino 1.8. Simply double-click the downloaded file and proceed with the default settings. I want to take this opportunity, while installing, to explain the technologies we are going to use in more detail. WebSockets are a technology that allows for bidirectional communication between a client and a server over a single TCP connection. This allows for real-time updates and interactions between the client and server without the need for the client to constantly pull the server for new information. This is perfect for streaming video frames from a device to the server, which we will do in a coming tutorial video, where we are using an ESP32 CAM module. Open the Arduino IDE after installation. Simply press the Windows button and start typing Arduino, or double-click the icon on your desktop. Once we are in the Arduino IDE, 
We need to add the ESP8266 boards JSON file to the boards list in order to access the various ESP8266 board configurations and select the appropriate one for our project. To do this, we can navigate to the file menu and select preferences, then add the URL for the ESP8266 boards JSON file to the additional boards manager URLs field. After adding the URL and clicking OK, we can go to the Tools menu and select Board and then select Boards Manager to open the Boards Manager window. In the Boards Manager, we can search for ESP8266 and install the package for the board. I have already installed the board so I don't have to do this step, but once the package is installed, we will be able to access the ESP8266 boards in the Tools menu and select the appropriate one for our project. Choose the generic ESP8266 module. In order to add support for WebSockets communication and talk to our Node.js server, we will be using an external library. To download this library, simply navigate to the library's GitHub page in your web browser and download the source code zip file. Once the file is downloaded, you can add the library to your Arduino IDE by going to the sketch menu and selecting Include Library followed by Add.zip Library. Select the downloaded zip file and the library will be added to your Arduino IDE. You can then access the library's functions and classes in your sketch to establish WebSockets communication with your Node.js server. A TTL to USB programmer is a device that allows you to connect a microcontroller, such as an Arduino, to a computer via a USB cable. The programmer converts the TTL, transistor-transistor -transistor logic, signals from the microcontroller to the USB protocol, allowing you to upload sketches to the microcontroller and communicate with it. This type of programmer is often used when a microcontroller does not have a built-in USB interface or when the USB interface is not functioning properly. It is a useful tool for programming and debugging microcontroller-based projects. To connect the TTL converter to the AZNV and your computer, you will need to use jumper wires. First, connect the TXD pin on the TTL converter to the TX pin on the AZNV. Then, connect the RXD pin on the TTL converter to the RX pin on the AZNV. Next, connect the GND pin on the TTL converter to the GND pin on the AZNV. Once these connections are made, plug a micro USB cable into your computer and connect the other end to the micro USB connector on the AZNV. Finally, Plug the TTL USB programmer into a different USB port on your computer. This will allow the TTL converter to communicate with the AZNV and your computer, allowing you to upload sketches and debug your microcontroller-based project. This is how it can look once it is connected. Now it's time to write some code. First, we include the libraries we need for the project. Arduino WebSockets. This is a library for implementing WebSocket client and server functionality on an Arduino. ESP8266 Wi-Fi. This is a library for connecting to Wi-Fi networks on devices based on the ESP8266 microcontroller. Stio.h. This is the standard input-output header in the C programming language, which provides functions for reading from and writing to the standard input and output streams. Secrets.h This is a custom header file that contains sensitive information, such as network credentials. You can remove this line and write the SSID and password to your own Wi-Fi network when we'll set up the network settings further down in the code, since you don't have that header file. SHT3X, this is a library for communicating with temperature and humidity sensors from the SHT3X series. MQ2, 
This is a library for interfacing with gas sensors that use the MQ2 gas sensor module. In order to properly utilize the SHT3X and MQ2 libraries in our project, we must first ensure that they are installed and accessible to the Arduino IDE. Fortunately, in contrast to the external Arduino WebSockets library, this can be easily accomplished by using the library manager, which is built into the Arduino IDE. To access the library manager, simply click on the tools menu and then select manage libraries from the drop down menu. Once the library manager is open, you can search for the SHT3X and MQ2 libraries by entering their names in the search bar at the top of the window. When the desired libraries appear in the search results, simply select them and click the install button to add them to your project. Once again, this is something I have already done so. I will skip this step. Now that all of our dependencies are included, we can start writing the logic to get the result we want. First, we add some variables to hold some data for us that the code will utilize later on. These are network settings. Here, we need to set the SSID that I mentioned earlier. It is simply the name you see for your network on devices you are using to connect to it. Then, write your password to your network. Remember to use quotation marks for the strings, both for the SSID and the password. The IP address in the WebSocket server host variable can remain as is for now, since we don't have a node.js server yet to connect to. We will revisit this line in the next video, in which we will create the node.js server. We can leave the WebSocket server port as it is, as well, for now. These are the sensor settings. They're basically just variables that hold data for us as the program runs. Using namespace WebSockets allows the use of WebSockets objects without specifying the namespace, and WebSockets client client creates a WebSocket client object. The setup function just prepares things for us with our sensors. We begin the Wi-Fi setup with our variables declared under the network settings section. We begin serial monitoring so that we can see what we are going to send to the node.js server when it is built in the coming video. We then print to the serial monitor that we are trying to connect to the network each half a second. Then we have a 5 second delay and we even initialize the sensors. In the loop function, everything happens. We first run a while loop to try to set up a connection to the client. Afterwards, we update the temperature and humidity sensor and store all sensor values in variables. These values are then used to set up the output variable in a JSON structure, which we print to the serial monitor and send to the node.js server. After a delay of 300 milliseconds, the loop starts over and updates the sensor data. We can now comment out the while loop used to connect to the server as well as the client send command until we have a server to communicate with so that we can try the code out. The program is now ready to be uploaded to our AZNV module. Click the upload button and wait till you see dots appearing in the debug terminal. Then push and hold the reset button on the board and push the flash button, release the reset button and right after that, also release the flash button and the binary starts to be uploaded to the device. Push the reset button once again when it is done uploading. We can then check the built-in serial monitor to see the data streaming in. In the next part of the video, we're going to dive into the exciting world of Node.js server programming. You'll get to see the values in all their glory, just as they were intended to be seen. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again soon.